Hi everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode here on our podcast. I'm thrilling to be here once again. I'm your host Ving and this is Gears at the Sim Racing Podcast, bringing you another exhilarating expedition, as I can call it. This time we journeyed into the world of the Man Cave, an expedition in UK that unfolded in the past weekend from October 27 to the October 29th. As we mentioned, this was the inaugural edition of such an exhibition here in UK and as a first time event there was high points and a lot of low points. But before we jump in the details, take a moment to check our image on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like button and support the podcast. And if you're listening as an audio version, we already know the drill. Give us a shining five star rating. The main cave was held in a rather compact space, possibly due to its debut uh, edition, as I say. Surprisingly, I think many of the big brands who typically associate to the concept of main cave weren't present, but trust me, we get some exciting discoveries to talk about shortly. We spot saunas, sheds, jacuzzis, pool tables, and pool tables, and pool tables. Yes, lots of them. Ping pong, a huge diverse array of arcade uh, gaming machines. Memorabilia, spanning from cars, music, cinema, football, and much more. Some of these are things that you expected, but I stumbled upon some real surprise. Brands like Mission Neon, who brought stunning lighting options, golf sim rooms, Verso Floor, GT Omega, and some sim racing gems like Simhound, Sim Staff, Aztec Sim Sport, and PACR. But now let's get real and discuss the ups and downs of the event. The location was at the neck, strategically chosen right art of UK in Birmingham, make it accessible to enthusiasts from all corners of the country. However, here is where I have to be honest about the Downside Expo team. I think didn't quite live it up the grandeur that we were anticipating. From the image we have seen, we expect to witness more impressive man caves with an array of hobbies collectibles and unique displays. Unfortunately, I fell a bit short in these regards, but you know, every beginning has a room to grow and I see a lot of potential here. Just bear in mind when I'm talking about the potential to grow up here. So I went on a Friday and on a Saturday. On a Friday, I think would be enough time to see everything, but fell a bit short because I didn't see a lot of people outside the exhibitors. So felt like on that Friday was only the people that was presenting the stands and a couple of people that went there to see it that would be present on Saturday of course was a little bit uh, bigger more people around but I have to be really really honest if not was a sim racing community present on that day I think that they will be a little bit more down so thanks so much for everyone that appeared there including Lawrence and the Potato Nation Gamer Muscle, Random Call Sign and much much more Moving on, let me share a fantastic encounter that I had with sim racing exhibitors at the event, but trust me, you won't believe it where I ran into them. In a standing blue Alpine A110, what a surprise it was. Oh, you're Josh from SimStar, what do you do for a living? <laughs> hey man, uh, yeah, so I build racing simulators and help run them at events. So where do you buy this car? <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. So guys, you are here with Josh from uh, SimStar. Tell me a little bit more about the this expo, this man cave. Yeah, for sure. So the man cave expo is basically designed for people who are trying to add things to their man cave. Yeah. So maybe it's a garage, maybe it's a private room in their house, yeah. somewhere that the wife doesn't want them, you know, wherever it might yeah, be. Exactly. Um, so there's loads of different stuff on this weekend for things that people can add, you know, pool tables, all sorts. Uh, and we got some racing simulators here with Ace Attack, which is cool. All right. And you have a partnership with the Aztec. Yeah, so um, Ace Tech came on board to help support us for this activation, which is awesome. Um, we provide freelance staff to kind of help them at events. And this is just kind of the, the kickoff of our collaboration, which is awesome. Okay, so we're going to do it more things with the Aztec on the That's future. That's the plan. As long as this goes well, hopefully we will. <laughs> so, and uh, what happened happen with the Sim staff 2024? What are you going to see it? Uh, we got a lot of stuff planned. Um, we're supporting a lot of the big brands with their, their events and their activations. So if you're at a Grand Prix or getting a private install, hopefully one of our guys will turn up and help. Thanks so much for finally having the pleasure of meeting Josh and the Sim staff team. We had agreed on making a podcast in the expo, but unfortunately I get a little bit sick, was really busy and none of us had the time. But this introduction is going to be brief as I plan to invite them and have them on a dedicated podcast episode in the future. Another surprise was Andreas representing Aztec 
as you know he was already on the expo present i had him talking on the podcast so it was nice to have him back to talking about again the insights that brought them to the man cave so guys look who i found here andrea for the second time for the seventh time in one month man <laughs> what you bring it today here what you guys are doing well, today we got two rigs uh, at the Man Cave Expo here. Uh, we decided to bring the Forte bundle, which is our mid-tier range. Yep. You can see the boxes here. Yep. Uh, we thought this made most sense because, again, the Invicta is our top tier. It's the best what we can do. Yep. Uh, Forte is something that everyone can be part of. The ones who want to practice for a real race, for people, customers who want to just sim race and have an immersive experience they can get that here yep. and then we have la prima of course which is a great entry level uh, product series you can get as well but we're not with the forte and that's what we got here today okay and big difference from the sim expo no nah well <laughs> we we basically had all the different products we well the uh, different products uh, at the expo so right now we're a bit limited but i think this will show a lot of the people here that comes to the expo yeah. what what products we offer what can okay. you what can you get out of what experience can you get in a man cave basically if you get a sim rig down there what can you expect from that i think the forte bundle is a perfect example yeah. uh, because it's a lot of fun and it's something that people they can enjoy together even if you have friends coming over and stuff like we that. speak about this when i think or when we do an endurance race if you go with a 27 newtons you you are doing yeah. more than an over gym section i would say if you do 27 newton meters in 24 hours man you can skip the gym for sure <laughs> so i think i think the fort for as uh as a amateur ish i think is is the best that you have on the market. And the thing is the compatibility that you've been speaking. You guys open to a lot of brands that you guys can see there. Yeah. And, and that is a big thing because after we are not starter suit who only get the wheels from this brand, we can get wheels from other brands. You can expand our... Exactly. We work, you can get our quick release from our web shop and you can basically just apply that to any steering wheel, but you can also go from different wheel manufacturers and buy it with a uh, Ace take quick release on it from the beginning, so with native support. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Exactly. And I also think what is important to show, we have the banner up here. Um, if people there are on a bot yet, and they may not want to go for the Invicta series for pedals because they don't really know, you know, is the hydraulic, is that, is that, is that something they want? Is that worth it? The good thing with us is that if you're in doubt, go with Forte. Go with La Prima. And yeah, as you grow and get better, you can buy an upgrade kit and basically get a new cylinder and say, you can keep your old pedal set. Or old pedal set. Doesn't even need to be old. But you can keep your four-day pedal set and buy an upgrade kit and then have an, a, a, an Invicta on it. So you don't limit yourself in terms of buying a Ford pedal. Yes, exactly. And you think the, the way that you guys see that is because you work already with computers and you understand that computers is building one uh, like part by part. Yeah, that's part of the uh, inspiration, I would say. Um, but again, I also think we try and do things different. We try and be a bit innovative and do something unique. And um, this has not been seen before the way we do upgrades. Um, and because we're in a world right now where people, they do have some struggles with money and budgets, right? Some people may want to start somewhere and then as they be, be, get better, exactly. they can then upgrade. So I think the idea came again that you don't need to spend a lot of money from the start. You can get started with a La Prima, which is a great, great pedal set. Same material as the Invicta, but it's easy to upgrade. And then you basically got the opportunity to do that without spending a fortune on three different pedal sets. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much once again for of the course, for the second time. Yeah, absolutely, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> we, we just crossed. I was to say hello to Wozen and after oh, yeah, <laughs> but we are yeah. we are without the suit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> without absolutely. the LMP3 car. That exactly. was uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a bit different color. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, it's a nice car as well. A big thank you to Andreas for joining us once again and sharing all his knowledge. Other surprise was Adam from Simhound. I managed to get my hands in some of their gear and it seems there might be some exciting collaborations on the horizon for the channel, but have a look on what we talk about. What you bring to the man cave? So we've just jumped on the stand with Sim staff here. Yeah. They've got some play seat rigs with Ace Tech. Um, so we've jumped on this stand to showcase some of our accessories. We've got our gloves. Uh, some shoes and some socks with us um, and just to meet people who are trying to build the man caves and see if we can help them with their uh, sim racing needs.
talk to me about the shoes. The shoes. So they are um, they're based on water shoes. Yeah. Um, so nice thin sole. Uh, we've put a little bit of extra support on the top so that when you're doing heel and toe braking, your foot doesn't you know slip out of the shoe. Okay. Um, and we've obviously slightly tweaked the sole of the shoe so that it doesn't need water drain holes, for example. Um, but basically, the construction is very similar to water shoes and they're just really comfortable. You can wear them in the rig for a very long time and people love them and they've been flying off the shelf. So, yeah, yeah really, I saw them really, in a lot of videos of community. Yeah, I think yeah. random call sign appeared with some. He loves them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big it one. actually started because it was uh, on Twitter. He put a tweet out saying a sim racing company should do water shoes. <laughs> so we just replied saying, OK, then <laughs> and we did. And um, people really like them. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, because it's light, you know, something yeah, light on your yeah. on your feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's light and it's not too expensive as well. It's something that people oh. can buy and just price range uh, 25 pounds. Oh, so, the right. yeah, the right. so, so it's, uh, that's, that's, that's a good. lot cheaper than uh, a lot that's of the sim racing boots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. normally we go for car to car. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the gloves, what's the stand from, different from your gloves to the gloves on so the market? So again, we buy in um, really large quantities from our, our suppliers, which means that we can offer a slightly lower price point to okay. a lot of the gloves that are out there. Um, so they are still based on the, they've got like the um, artificial suede palm with some okay. rubberized textured grips. Um, so they do offer good grip on both suede wheels and on rubberized wheels. Um, but again, we've just made them as lightweight as possible. The back's breathable and we don't do long um, long glove variants because okay. again, in so the rig- It's like more it, To keep it, yeah, to keep it cool, um, you don't obviously don't need the protection yep. that karting and um, driving gloves offer. So we want it to feel motorsport inspired, but still be built for the sim. Okay. Uh, and that's where Simran, we really focus on. We're not trying to be a motorsport company. We're trying to be a, a sim racing company. Okay. Um, so that's why we target our products like yeah, we do. Yeah, because a lot of times the, the, the gloves tend to be very heavy. Yes. And people yeah, from yeah. sim racers, we need to have light yeah, gloves. Yeah, yeah. Because we touch on the phones, we exactly. are streaming, yeah. we are touching on the uh, mouses yeah, and they, everything. Yeah, so yeah. you have to be like, a lot of people that sometimes they use yeah, like we've cycling, got the little, we've got cycling the touch gloves. Screen. Yeah, 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 we've got the touch screen thing. We do offer fingerless gloves as well for people who want to use uh, yeah. um but still want to be able to wear gloves. So yeah, again, uh, we want our products to be purely focused on the sim, make the sim as comfortable as possible, um, while still feeling a motorsport inspired. That's the idea behind it. Okay, and what's going to be for Simland on the future? In the future, what so we're going to expect in 2024. Yeah, so we've actually just moved into a new business unit. Okay, that's great. Um, so we can actually previously, so we do sell some aluminium profile rigs as well. Okay. Um, and they've always been on a lead time in the past because um, we've had to order things in when the orders come in. Okay. Yeah. Um, but now with this new unit, it's enabling us to actually hold stock. So our aluminium profile rigs are going to be ready for immediate dispatch. Um, we've got some new products coming. And also at this unit, we're going to have two rigs. So our rig that we do now and a new design of a rig okay. um, actually on show for people to come and try out. They'll be able to come and, and, um, and have a go on the rigs themselves and just sort of build a bundle build a sim racing bundle and that's yeah. that's the plan for the next year for simhound and the price on the aluminium uh, profiles so our aluminium profile starts at 295 pounds okay it's not so it's yeah quite, it's affordable yeah, so it's, it's a lightweight um well it's a heavyweight 3060 profile rig so it's a little bit smaller profile but we try and use a thick thick profile um and we find that for 90 percent of people is all they'll ever need yeah um i'm running a uh, Simagic Alpha with okay. 15 Newton meters, and I'm just running it on a 3060 rig, and absolutely nope. no problem, perfect. Yeah. And they have so. a monitor stand with a rig, or the monitor stand have to be separate? Uh, it's a separate, um, but our monitor mounts start at, I believe, at the moment it's 110 pounds. Okay, so on the final, for a single you have monitor mount, around yeah. 400 roughly, yeah. you have uh, yeah. without seats, so it's, yeah. it's quite yeah. affordable. We do, we do sell bucket seats. Um, but they are fully FIA rated bucket seats, so they're a bit, bit on the pricier yeah. side. But they are they're fantastic seats, absolutely zero flex. Um, but they work um, they work really well as well. So yeah. and they're UK providers that we use, so UK okay, yeah. seats. Yeah, that's so, perfect. Yeah, thanks so much. Perfect. I will not call the next guest a surprise or the next talk a surprise, but probably an highlight of the day for me that was meeting meeting. PACR, Perfect Acceleration, Sim Racing. He was a true gentleman with a health of knowledge and insight to share that you don't want to miss. So guys, I'm here with Perfect Acceleration, Sim Racing. Thank you so much. Tell me a little bit more about you. 
Okay, well, um, Perfect Acceleration Sim Racing um, is my own design. Okay. Um, came out of a love of racing for many years um, and racing my son through British Karting Championships and lots of other uh, junior series okay. into a uh, eventually ending up with the Mini Challenge JCW series uh, in which we did very well. Um, unfortunately, like most single parents, um, money was an issue and eventually it ran out. Um, and that was a sad time, I have to say. Uh, but my passion for motorsports has never gone away. And so I purchased a simulator for myself about six years ago. And really, because I was working full time, was only really playing around, not really doing things properly. And then I found myself during COVID with a period of time where I could concentrate, like as, as did a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I, I did a lot of people. And, and so um, out of that, a friend of mine came and said, because he knew I built computers, because okay. that's my full time job is, a, is an IT manager. Um, could, could you build me a PC for sim racing? Yes. Could you build me a sim rig? Well, yes. <laughs> Not really knowing what I was doing, but that was six years ago. And now I'm in a business where I have a brand and I'm now building, supplying and customizing to a degree sim rigs. I have a showroom, which is my front room um, at home with five sim rigs fixed all of the time with various uh, pieces of equipment, different wheels, different pedals. Sim Magic. Some with Sim Magic, okay. some with Fanatec, some with other brands. Um, and and I give people the option of you can have this pedal with this wheel, this seat with that screen, etc. So we have a, we don't do bronze, silver, gold. Okay. That's we, we, we everything is a, is customizable. Um, and then out of all of this sim racing and it grew and grew and grew to the point where I had to start saying no because I had no time. Um, we started running our own e-series, normally for fun, uh, lots of fun events to try and get more people involved in the sim racing community. And um, out of that, because of my associations with the real motorsport world, I approached two or three junior racing series um, the most popular one, probably Janetta Junior. Although, having said that, the larger grids are Junior Saloon cars. We also have Junior Fiestas, lots of Junior championships. And I've approached these people and said, well, look, you know, during the winter, we can run an E-Series to keep these kids. Uh, it's a lot cheaper for the parents because I know, again, from being a parent, a racing father, that to go testing during the winter is terribly expensive and you've normally spent all the money during the racing season. Exactly. So out of this came an idea from me to create a series that, that gave youngsters um, the ability to race in a sim racing environment or in a racing environment on the sim against each other but with a prize pool of an opportunity to race in the real world. And I took this idea to um, two junior series so far, Janetta and Junior Saloon Cars, okay. and they both thought it was a fantastic idea. We've run three E-series now based on that premise where everybody signs up, they uh, race, uh, against each other, we raced it under a set of rules and regulations, which are very close as we can make them to the blue book. Okay. So there is no driving into each other. There's no crashing into each other. There's there's proper rules and regulations. We have drivers briefings. We have um, a proper disciplinary procedure, a proper clerk of the course, protest forms. It's run like a proper race weekend, but on the sim. And it's 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 twofold. It's partly educational for the juniors because they have to understand that you know you can't get in a car, go on a racetrack, and then just drive into people because there are consequences in the real world of doing that, mainly financial. Yeah. Um, and so we do we do it for that. But the prizes in these series, the entry into, for example, the Ginetta Scholarship, gives the winner of our E-Series, the opportunity to go from his bedroom 
to take part in what is a very prestigious thing anyway, this Janetta scholarship, normally 60 people competing for one seat over a, a three day event. Uh, and it gives them a free entry into that, which is, you know, not a, not a cheap entry. Um, and if they're successful and win that, they actually can go into a race car for a year, fully funded by Janetta. And so, you know, that for me as a, with my background as a racing father, those opportunities didn't exist when I started racing my son. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think sim racing, I, I, know, I know a lot of people in mot motorsport disagree with me. And I, I went to do a track day a couple of months ago in Truxton. And the first thing they said to me, oh, you are a sim racer. There's no restart button. It's the, the first thing. thing. Here you don't restart. <laughs> but yeah, well, that's what people think. Yeah, but they forgot that sim racing is, that, is evolving to a level that is getting close yes. to motorsport and is helping a lot of young drivers that didn't have a chance to go to the tracks to develop their skills and probably going to have better motorsport, closing battles, and they're going to be more aware. A lot of them, they're training by traffic to get aware of how to manage traffic in, in racing situations. That's something that they cannot do training, but they can do in a sim race. Of course. So and, and, and it's also, uh, yeah, the, the educational part of it appeals to me. I mean, although I'm not a, a, any, by, by any means a scholar, but uh, the, the educational side of it appeals to me because in order to run a race car or drive a race car in the real world, you need to understand strategy. You need to understand car setup, physics. Some, it's not a matter of, you know, my dad has a large wallet, so therefore I can go and race cars. And uh, because there are a lot of people who are very, very skilled, but unfortunately just never get that opportunity. Exactly. And if I can be part of presenting that opportunity to some of these individuals, or at least coaching them for the eventuality of them getting that opportunity, then that's what I want to do. And it's opening a small door that we never... Of course, for, which could lead into ones. all kinds of things. Yeah. And, and I, will, I will wear my heart outside my sleeve if that happens to one of my entrants, generally. Thank you so much for being a part of me, okay? Thank you. And to wrap this episode, nothing better than own a huge thank you to Lawrence for introducing me Jack Davison, a NASCAR European driver, representing GT Omega. It was an exciting opportunity to talk with him as we'll be part of the next episode talking about NASCAR. Yeah. Guys, I'm bumping here with Jack. Sit down on his amazing GT Omega. <laughs> Omega, a proper NASCAR driver. Tell me a little bit about you and the GT Omega. So GT Omega has kind of been backing me. I'm one of their sponsored professional athletes. Uh, I've been that for like five years. Um, so we started off doing like the JCW minis that followed okay. the British touring cars around. Um, and then for uh, last year, we moved into European NASCAR. So it's, uh, it's been a good good journey so far. So hoping to keep it up for, for years to come. And um, what's, the thing, what's the difference on NASCAR, European NASCAR to NASCAR, um, the American one? So, I mean, the European NASCAR is quite, um, it's, obviously on tracks rather than ovals. So this year has just kind of been like um, uh, Valunga, which is in Italy, uh, Zolder in Belgium. So it's kind of just tracks like that, even Brands Hatch as well, Brands Indy. So it's quite a lot of cars to shove into a small grid, like at Brands anyway, whereas some of the bigger tracks, it's quite, it's quite good. So. And because they are heavy cars, a lot of downforce. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they're not actually that heavy. I mean, they're space frame cars. They've got a big engine in the front, not really a lot of weight in the back, except okay. for the fuel tank. So I think all in, I think they're like just over 1,200 kilos. So they're not even that... No, not so heavy. Yeah, no, no, they're not, they're not really that heavy. Um, Run what? 300 something horsepower, no? Uh, 450. Okay, 450. So, so uh, yeah, a it's a small block Chevy on a set of Holly carbs. So it's, uh, it's good grunt like, it's just all just natural. So I'm, I'm used to like turbo cars. So you're kind of trying to keep it in the turbo. Yep. But this is just raw power, which is brilliant. So it's uh, a little bit of different driving style to what I'm used to. I'm used to more front wheel drive, whereas this is rear. So I was trying to get used to it this year. So starting to get the grips with it. That's, that's amazing. And how are you training yourself for the NASCAR car? So I, I trained by uh, on just on the sim. So okay. just um, the sim that GT Omega gave me. Um, kind of gave me like a pretty good setup, really good wheelbase and stuff. So um, their new prime cockpit as well, that's that's pretty good. So that's Okay, fun. and any favorite uh, sim uh, uh, game that you use it? Uh, sim game. Well, I racing. I like okay. iRacing, um, but I say it was quite good because you can kind of you get the mods for the actual NASCAR. So it's it's good. Like I'm, I'm kind of I switch between iRacing and a Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. Thank you.
I want to express my gratitude to everyone that was part of the Man Cave event. There was plenty of room to grow and learning from this inaugural expo. And I truly hope the success paves the way for more in the future. On our next episode, get ready for a special treat. I will be joined by a Portuguese driver competing in now the NASCAR Brazilian series, Lourenço Beirão. We will have loads to discuss about NASCAR and sim racing. Remember, podcasts come live every Wednesday, be on YouTube in the video form format and of course on the, our audio format where we already reached 200k uh, downloads in these 37 episodes. So thank you so much, guys. And of course, remember, this podcast is brought by the Samsung OLED G9 Odyssey, one of the best, if not the best monitor for gaming. I see you guys on the next episode. See you soon.